Hey there, KSAP County. Welcome back to another weekly video with the Dupuy team at Keller Williams Westdown. I'm Cassandra Lopez with the Dupuy team. And today we're going to talk about the brokerage fee. Yep, we're doing it. We're talking about money because if you think about it, if you're a buyer in any real estate market, this is likely the largest financial purchase investment that you're going to make in your lifetime, whether you do it once, whether you do it 20 times, it's still going to be the largest. Whether you're a seller, it is about getting the most money out of your investment up front that you can. You know, and when a seller says, oh, what's my home worth? Really what they're asking is, how much equity do I have in my home? Which equates to how much money am I gonna be able to put in the bank after I sell my house? So let's talk about the brokerage fee, how it is incorporated into a real estate transaction, who pays it, what it is, and what it's for. Brokerage fee is a professional service fee that is paid to a broker for services provided, services rendered, um, and that services includes a whole myriad, uh, a, a whole spectrum, a whole scope of things that uh, the state of Washington actually determines that we provide to our clients. So, and there's some brokers that go outside the scope and there's some that go way above and beyond and stuff, but for now we're just gonna talk about the general services that we provide to a seller or a buyer to uh, facilitate a fair exchange of real property from seller to buyer. It's essentially our job in a nutshell. So that's what the brokerage fee is. And the typical brokerage fee rate in our area is anywhere from six to 10%, depending on the type of property. Usually residential is a 6%, and then vacant land can be up towards the 10%. And that's typical but every property is a case by case and can be discussed individually if that's the need that you have. For buyers, when you're buying a house, uh, purchasing a home is likely the largest financial investment you're going to make in your lifetime. And so it's important to know where your money's going. And sellers, if you're selling a house, obviously the end game is to get as much money as you can from your sale. And so, you know, we'll talk about how the brokerage fee is incorporated into that. So 99.9% .9 of the time, the brokerage fee is discussed and negotiated between the seller and the seller's listing broker. And it's outlined on the listing agreement. So that's a document that the buyer is never gonna see and the buyer's broker is never gonna see um, and the buyer's brokerage is never gonna see. Unless that brokerage also has the listing, which is a whole different story, we'll talk about that later. So it outlines on there how much it's gonna be. So say John Doe is gonna sell his house um, Jane Doe is the listing broker and on the listing agreement, it says the brokerage fee will be 6% total. And then it'll say how much of that 6% is going to go to the selling brokerage. The selling brokerage is a brokerage and the broker who represents the buyer. And usually it's 50, 50. So if the brokerage fee is 6%, then three of that six will go towards the buyer's broker. And then the listing broker will get the other three. So that's how that works. And that is of the sales price. So say the home is listed at $400,000 and it sells for $415,000. The fee is based off of the sales price, which is $415,000, not the list price of four hundred. dollars um, Occasionally, we'll run into a situation where the seller does not want to pay a buyer's broker's broker fee. Okay. So in this case, the buyer and the buyer's broker need to negotiate in their buyer agreement who is going to pay the brokerage fee because the broker can't work for free. We are compensated for our services, for our special skill set and our expertise in this community, in this marketplace, in this county, and in this state. So um, we are licensed to practice limited law within the scope of our license which is something that um, you know a buyer or seller probably doesn't have those skills to do that themselves, which is why they hire a broker in the first place. So buyer uh, agreement that you, it'll outline if the seller, if the listing brokerage and the listing agreement does not outline a fee to be paid to the buyer's broker, the selling broker, then the buyer will cover X amount up to a certain, a certain percentage. So, for example, if standard brokerage fee is 6% and 3% each side, 
and the seller is only willing to pay 1% of the sales price for a fee for the buyer's broker, then the buyer agreement, if that is agree, if that's negotiated, that the buyer will pay up to 3%, then the buyer would cover the difference and pay 2% of the sales price as a fee to the broker for their services. So that's kind of a simple breakdown of how that works. Um, the brokerage fee is actually, especially in the super hot seller's market, it's actually a very, very hot topic. And it's a seller, it's a question that gets asked of us quite often by sellers. And they're always wanting us to reduce our fees, um, which doesn't make sense to me because quite honestly, um, whether they know it or not, that's our first opportunity to negotiate on their behalf. And right now we would be negotiating for our income. And if we were very quick to say, sure, I'll reduce my fee, then I'm telling you that my income doesn't matter to me and it, I'm, I don't deserve it and I don't earn it. So basically I'm telling you that I will dispose of my own income right off the bat, having never delivered you any services or goods whatsoever. Um, so that was my first attempt to negotiate for you and it failed miserably because I cut my commission right away. Okay, what that also means is if I'm not reckless with my own income, how would I negotiate on your behalf and how would I protect your income and your asset, which is your home and your equity, which is your liquid home. So those are things that need to be thought of because too often uh, brokers are not selected as the agent to represent that seller because they won't reduce their fee when it actually should be the other way around. It should be, I'm going with that broker because they won't reduce their fee, their fee because I know that that broker is going to, is going to earn it big time. So you get a broker who's going to reduce their fee right away. How hard do you think they're going to work for you? So especially in the seller's market, when we're dealing with, you know, a uh, seller is interviewing three and four and five brokers to list their property. You see brokers bending over backwards to get that listing. I'll landscape your yard. I'll paint your whole house. I will fix all the damage that your tenant created in your home while they were renting it. Out of my own pocket, you, you see brokers doing some crazy stuff to stick a sign in the yard. When really their services and their ethics and their moral practices should really speak for themselves. And that full fee, full service agent, is going to do a better job for you than any broker who would landscape your yard for you. So that's a basic rundown on what the brokerage fee is, who it goes to, how it's negotiated, how it's discussed, um, how much it is. So when you are getting yourself into the marketplace, whether you're a seller or a buyer, this sets a, a sort of level of expectation moving forward on who pays the fee and what you can expect to get for that fee. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Like this video, share it, like our Facebook page, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I'm Cassandra with Dequisi McKellar Williams West Sound. We'll see you next week.